Hello folks and welcome to um, Linux for Seniors. <clears throat> so um, I usually try to tell people right up front that this is not going to be a two minute video and uh, basically I'm not a speed reader. Uh, if you are looking for those kind of videos I would suggest uh, going somewhere else. Uh, however if you are wanting to know uh, the information in a presentable manner then I'm going to be making videos that are basically going to be explained a little bit uh, to the masses that are easier to understand. So most of my videos are more than two minutes and um, I do recommend that you subscribe and uh, today's topic is going to be about hard drives. You're replacing hard drives or wanting to know a little bit more about hard drives or your computers whether they're laptops or consoles. So I'm going to bring up my camera um, only because I have my, hello folks, I'm going to uh, talk about these toys here. So uh, it all depends on what kind of hard drive you're interested in. Uh, I don't have one displayed, but I do have an actual uh, web browser of one. And these are called NVMEs. They're the latest solid state hard drives. You do have to have a motherboard that these uh, connectors fit into just to let you know, but they come in various capacities and sizes. This is a one terabyte to give you an example. And this is just information I'm getting from Amazon. It's always uh, good to be able to see pictures of stuff. So anyways, let's talk about uh, these hard drives. So I have been around computers for over 30 years and I've been around Linux for over 25. I used to have a previous YouTube site um, so some people may recognize my voice, but anyways, the hard drives of yesterday look like this. I call them bricks. Um, they were even larger than that uh, over 20 years ago. But this weighs several pounds, and uh, this is actually a fairly modern one, believe it or not. It has the SATA or serial ATA connector and the power supply connector on it. And uh, in the old days, the drives looked like this. It had a ribbon cable on it, a jumper, and a power connector. And this one here is a whopping 4.3 gigabytes. I've got USB sticks that, uh, like this one is, uh, let me see what this one is, a 256 gigabyte USB stick. I know the camera's probably not gonna pick that up and I'm not gonna bother. But we've come a long ways. So uh, as we progressed, we started making drives a little bit, a little bit smaller. So this is still a ribbon style connector on here. If you can see that, um, some of the really old laptops used to use these uh, to a gigabyte. So as we progressed, we made solid state drives, no moving parts on those that have the same connectors as these big fat ones do. Uh, these, uh, that's how the data goes in and out of your computer. Serial ATA is what that stands for, SATA. And uh, on this particular drive, you can see it's wafer thin. This is a SATA port, and that's the power connector. These weigh nothing. They're all, they feel like a piece of plastic. The capacity on this one is one terabyte. They come in various capacities, and you can pick these up fairly cheap on places like Amazon.com. Now these fit in your laptops or console computers. Yes, you can use these on console computers because that's all I use. I have two consoles underneath my desk, but you cannot see there's one here and one on the other side. And they all use either these types or NVMEs. And me and the MVMEs again are, let me bring the picture back up, look like that. And these are a couple of inches long, maybe three, four inches long and uh, may, maybe at best two inches wide, something like that. I'm, I'm not sure of the full specs as far as the physical size, but they're very small and they fit on your bottom of your motherboard in most cases. So these are the modern ones and they're, uh, these are about 10 times as fast as these are. And these are roughly about the same 10 times as fast as these spinning hard drives. No moving parts, moving parts. There's a platter inside of here on a motor that spins. Basically, uh, if you're not too familiar with hard drives at all, there is uh, some heads that move in and out that read and write data on these things. I may be able to pull something up 
on Amazon for your quick reference if you just hold on for a second. So, if I can spell it right. So. See if I can find a picture of one that actually is broken up where you can see the innards. trying to get a photo of one of these. Okay, well, here's something similar. So um, as you can see, there's platters over here and then there's the heads and they physically move in and they slide back and forth. And that's just a driver card or the, the uh, circuitry that moves this armature. So they go in and out and this is showing you multiple platters. And a lot of the, um, well, a lot of the bigger hard drives have multiple platters, so. Some of the older ones um, may only have a single platter, like these old ones in here. But in either case, there's a round platter inside of here. There's part of the motor circuitry right there and the driver board that's sitting here. And basically the heads go in and out and read and write your data. So that's how your digital storage is uh, done with hard drives. You've got um, memory sticks. Some people call them thumb drives different names for them, but they're basically memory on a chip. Very similar to that solid state NVMe drive that I showed you earlier. It just has a different connector on it and they're a lot quicker than these are. These normally plug into a USB port, but they can be used as storage devices. To give you an example, this one is 256 gigabytes. So you can fit a lot of information on here. You put a couple operating systems on this thing. So storage devices, there you have it. Now, if you are in the market of replacing your drives, the hardest part to learn is taking your computer apart. Your computer uh, is either a console or maybe a laptop if you're trying to put in uh, one of these. And I can tell you by replacing your spinning hard drive, because they make these in the same size, but with a spinning hard drive, your solid state drives are usually a lot quicker. Once you've installed the operating system on them, they will boot faster and access data a lot faster than spinning hard drives. It, the biggest trick is to get the case open. And when you get the case open on a laptop and or a console computer, there's usually only two connectors. One more time, a little uh, closer view. This is your serial ATA. It's a thin ribbon cable. If you're on a console computer, it could be uh, a ribbon cable mounted inside your laptop that also probably incorporates the power on the on the same connector. They're separated, but usually, on, you know, you, you get where I'm getting at, I hope. On the inside of your console computers, it's usually a separate cable going to the motherboard and another cable coming from the power supply that gets it plugged into these things. And then you can get creative about how you want these mounted. A lot of my drives usually sit loosely either on the bottom of my my cases because uh, I don't move my cases very often but if you want a secure connection there is some bolt holes that are on just about all of these including this very old one you can see the little screw holes right here and I'll show you the fairly modern brick one too the far, fairly modern brick has four of these mounting screws and they would be mounted inside your console somewhere or on a bracket for secure connection. Again, these weigh a couple pounds. These weigh nothing, almost nothing. They almost feel like a piece of plastic. But they are a lot quicker than these old bricks. That's what I call those things. So on that note, I will say thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll have all kinds of videos and all kinds of material. So on that note, I will say thank you for watching.